The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Making your own French dressings with Kraft salad oil is rewarding, yet so easy. Rewarding because you can vary the flavor of your salad so many ways. Easy because it takes only a minute or two. This Kraft oil is a special oil that's super fine. That means it's lighter bodied for better blending of the dressing ingredients. A little later, I'll tell you about some wonderful French dressing recipes you'll get with Kraft salad oil. So you'll be listening. When the great Gildersleeve's nephew, Leroy, wants something badly enough, he's willing to go to considerable lengths to get it. This morning, he has oiled up his personality, pulled his halo firmly over his ears, and is trying to hypnotize his uncle so he won't even feel a $20 touch. Good morning, Unc. Well, good morning, Leroy. I trust you slept well last night. Very well, Leroy. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anything I can do for you this morning before breakfast? Thank you, my boy. I just want to read the papers. Can I turn the pages for you? <laughs> They're not really very heavy. Turn the pages. I wonder what he's up to. Aunt, um, guess what I've done for you already this morning? For me? I got up early and cleaned your two-tone shoes. You? Yeah? I didn't get any black on the white or any white on the black. Yeah, thank you. Let's see if the Giants won yet. That's not all I did for you, Unc. I wiped the dust off your car. I said I wiped the dust off your car. I said I wiped the dust off your car. That was very considerate of you, Leroy. It's very considerate of you to say so. I don't want my uncle, a big city official, to be seen in a dusty car. It's strange this hasn't worried you before. Well, I guess I'm just beginning to worry about things. Such as what? No use bothering you with my problems. You're all right, Leroy. You keep it to yourself. Uh, on the other hand, what seems like a big problem to a little kid like me wouldn't be any problem to a man like you. You could handle it like that. Easy as writing a check. Oh. I uh, take it this is a money problem. Unc, I want a motor for my bike. You do? I can buy one secondhand for 20 bucks. Well, Leroy, I don't see why you have a problem. You don't? You're old enough to have a little motor on your bike. Why, it's the simplest thing in the world. It is. I must be dreaming. <laughs> you have no problem at all. Just go earn the money and buy the motor. <laughs> earn twenty dollars? I knew I was dreaming. <laughs> I'd like Leroy to have a motor for his bike, but by George, you'll have to work for it. Not just work me. Hello, Peavy. Peavy? Where is he? Oh, Peavy! <laughs> That's strange. Door was open. What a way to run a drugstore. How he's managed to keep the place open for 25 years, I'll never know. Peavy! Him and his slip shot operation. He'd never get along if it wasn't for faithful customers like me. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Maybe. As the song goes, I can get along without you very well. Phoebe, I didn't see you. Where were you when I came in? Under the counter, retrieving a nickel. When I heard you come in, I thought I'd stay under there and see what you'd say about me. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Now I know. What can your friendly slipshod operator do for you today? It's... I'm sorry, Peavy. I didn't mean a word of it. No, yes, you did. No, I didn't. <laughs> Believe me, Peavy, I'll do anything to make amends. Yeah, why don't you go under the counter and I'll say a few things about you? 
<laughs> All right, Peavy. Let me have a bag of candy. I want to take it home to Leroy. Did Leroy catch you talking about him, too? Of course not. I just want to take him something because I feel sorry for him. The boy tried to talk me into buying a motor for his bike, and I had to refuse it. Great one. <laughs> no, Peavy. The boy has to learn he can't get everything he wants in life just by asking for it. I didn't become water commissioner just by asking for the job. No. As I recall, you got Judge Hooker to ask for you. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. I have to work to keep it. And Leroy will have to work for his motorbike. You don't understand. You bet. He'll have to depend on his own initiative. He didn't look to me. Well, Leroy is a very resourceful young man. He always amuses me the way he gets around you. I know. But he won't get away with it this time, Peavy. You forget that Leroy has the mind of a boy. Well, I have my mind. Yes, that's what I say. Peavy. <laughs> everything at the new house? Oh, just fine. We're finally getting settled. That's nice. It sure seems strange to see you coming in the back door instead of coming down the stairs. <laughs> Bronco and I can hardly realize we have a home of our own. Yes, ma'am. Coffee's still warm from breakfast. Want some? Oh, I'd love it, Bertie. Bronco made our coffee this morning and it was awful. Yes, ma'am. If he doesn't improve, I'll have to get up and make it myself. <laughs> it's coffee. Yes, Leroy? Oh, hi, Marge. Hello, Leroy. What are you having, coffee? Uh-huh. Be sure and get the dime, Bertie. She's a customer now. That boy. <laughs> what you want, Leroy? What did I do with the morning paper? Well, from the looks of it, he sat on it. It is. Oh, thanks. I want to look at the want ads. Why the want ads? I want something. i got to figure out a way to make some money. Didn't your uncle say you could have the motor for your bike? Oh, sure. He said I could have it. But he got a little narrow-minded about who's to pay for it. <laughs> or you might say he ain't putting out for no putt-butt, huh? Nah. Uh, what kind of a job are you looking for? Well, the kind everybody else is looking for. High pay and short hours. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, business opportunities. If you have $5,000, you can double it in 60 days. If you got $5,000, who needs an opportunity? <laughs> now, this one don't sound so good either. Delivery boy wanted part-time. Gosh, it'd take me all summer to raise $20. A Bronco would pay you to mow the lawn, if we had a lawn. Oh, look where it says salesman wanted, Leroy. You're a good talker. I haven't been able to talk. I've got a 20 bucks. Hey, hey, here's rooms for rent. Why don't I rent the room you and Bronco moved out of, Marge? Oh, I know, Unky, you'd love that. After waiting all these years to have a little privacy. You can have privacy at the office. Sure, that's what I'll do. I'll rent it for $20 in advance. Leroy, that room's not yours to rent. This is Mr. Gilsey's house, and I imagine he'd like to have something to say about it. Oh, I know how to handle lunch. I got it down to a science. Oh? First, I'll make him feel bad about not giving me the money for the motor. Then I'll make him feel good by accepting his offer to let me use the room. He may let you use it, but he ain't gonna let you rent it. When I get through with us, he'll be so confused, he won't know what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> I should have been a lawyer. If you keep this up, you're going to need a lawyer. I feel sorry for little Leroy. I know he's disappointed about the bike motor. Well, this bag of candy will make him feel better. Well, Leroy. Hi, Aunt. Yeah, I thought you'd be out playing. What are you doing, sitting in the parlor? Just waiting for you. Me? I thought you'd never get home. <laughs> oh, what a devoted nephew. Well, my boy, I'm here with a bag of candy for you. Gee, thanks, Aunt. But you don't have to do things for me. I don't expect it. There's no reason why I should. What's this, Leroy? You made that pretty plain to me this morning. If I want anything, it's up to me to figure out a way to get it. No, Leroy. Of course, I'm just a little kid, but that's what's expected of me. 
<laughs> now, my boy, don't be too upset about not getting the motor for your bike. I'm not. Why do I need a motor for my bike? Candy is loaded with energy. I can eat the bag of candy and pedal all over town. <laughs> let's not take that attitude, Leroy. I'm a reasonable man, but let's face it, you don't need a motor. I'm sorry, Uncle. I guess you're right. If I had a motor on my bike, I wouldn't be home so much. That's a nice way to look at it, Leroy. I'm glad you think so much of your home. Yeah. I wonder why I do. <laughs> what? I don't have very much. Just my own little room. It's crowded, but it's home. <laughs> don't you have enough room, Leroy? Well, I could use a bigger one. There's an extra room upstairs. Yes, there is. I was sort of hoping that when Marge and Bronco moved out, you'd say, Leroy, why don't you take over that room? Do anything you want to with it. <laughs> but you didn't say it. Well, I didn't say it, but... Well, why don't you take over the room? Now, nah, you might want to use it for something someday. Leroy, please take it. <laughs> well, you might not like what I do with it. You can do anything you want to with it. Rumpus room, storage room... Just so you keep it tidy. Oh, I'll keep it tidy. I'll wash the windows, polish the furniture. You? Yeah. I'll even put some flowers in it. What a sweet, sensitive little boy. <laughs> Bertie. Have you ever seen a boy as happy as Leroy since I turned the room over to him? No, see, he's happy all right. Right, George, if I do say so myself, I know how to handle that boy. Oh, he's putty in your hands. Anybody can see that. I'll get it! <laughs> I'll get it, Bertie. Well, it's the judge. Hello, Jelly. Uh, I see you're wearing a poppy. Yes, this is a buddy poppy. They're selling them this week. Here's one for you. Oh, thank you, Horace. Uh, come on in. I just dropped by to see if you'd like to play Pinochle tonight. Not a bad idea. I'm free as a bird. Splendid. I don't want you to get lonesome now that Marjorie Bronco and the twins have moved. Well, I miss them, Judge, but it's nice to have the privacy in the space. You sit down. Take any chair you want to. Thank you, Gildy. Why don't you stay for dinner? Of course, you'll have to take pot luck. I'd be delighted if you're positive it's convenient. Judge, anything's convenient around here these days. <laughs> the way we do things. Nobody to consider. Nobody to answer to except Leroy and me. By the way, what's come over, Leroy? What do you mean? When I came in, he was out in the yard picking flowers. Yo, I suppose he's going to put them in Marjorie and Bronco's room. <laughs> Who's there to smell them? Nobody. But Leroy's going to take it over. He is? Yeah, he wanted a motor for his bike. But I very cleverly maneuvered him into accepting the room instead. Well, what on earth is Leroy going to do with the room? He can do anything he wants to with it. Come on, Judge. Let's see what he's been doing up there all day. All right, let's. Yeah, I'll bet it's already jammed with tennis rackets, baseball bat, roller skates. Yeah, that's fine with me. Pretty cagey the way I got the boy off that bike motor kick. Why, the room isn't cluttered at all. It's as clean as a pin. Say, it is. Leroy never kept his own room this neat. I wonder if that boy has something up his sleeve. Here's a note on his dresser. Oh? You suppose it could be for you? Well, let me read it, Judge. Now, wait a minute, Gilday. This isn't for you. It's for the newspaper. It's a want ad. <laughs> Give me that, Judge. Attractive corner room for rent. $20. Oh, my goodness. Why would Leroy want to rent this room? Gilday, what was the price of that bike motor you talked him out of? Well, it was $20. $20? Leroy! <laughs> <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve returns in a moment. Don't you feel pretty good when you discover a new food idea that your family really goes for? And it's especially nice when the recipe doesn't take a lot of time. Well, right now at your grocer's, Kraft has not one, but six easy and delicious salad dressing ideas. Attached to every bottle of Kraft salad oil is a folder of recipes for excitingly different French dressings. 
And they're ones that can add new flavor and sparkle to the most ordinary salad. For example, there's a Roquefort French dressing that men in particular like on head lettuce. Then there's a honey celery seed French dressing that's luscious on grapefruit wedges. And for your favorite tossed salads, there's a recipe for Kraft's own special French dressing. When we say that these recipes are quick and easy, we mean they take only about a minute or two. Just measure out the ingredients, shake, and you have a perfectly blended salad dressing, ready to chill and serve. You can always be sure of perfect blending with Kraft salad oil, because this Kraft oil is super fine. That gives it lighter body to blend better with whatever ingredients a recipe calls for. Tomorrow morning, get Kraft salad oil and see what a simple thing it is, making a variety of delicious dressings. Remember, superfined Kraft salad oil. With it, you'll get your free recipe folder of delicious dressings. When the great Gildersleeve told Leroy he could do anything he wanted with a spare bedroom, he had no idea his nephew planned to rent it to get money to buy a bike motor. Now, the great Gildersleeve isn't a man who goes back on his promise, but he certainly would like to. Leroy, I'm surprised at you. Wanting to rent out one of my rooms. One of your rooms? I thought you said it was mine. Well, it is. You but... said I could do anything I wanted with it. I suppose I did. But, Leroy... Okay, Aunt. I'll let you wiggle out of it. If you want to go back on your promise to a little kid. (laughs) A relative at that. Well... When I grow up, I wonder if I'll go back on my promises to little kids. Be a chip off the old block. Leroy... I never got along with my school teacher, Miss Pickens, but I guess it's like she says... As the twig is bent, so grows the tree. <laughs> oh? I bet I'd go up to be a regular slippery elm. <laughs> now, Leroy, you know I'm not going back on my promise to you. Oh, boy, you mean I can rent the room? Certainly. I don't know how he got me around to this, but I've said it again. <laughs> You're swell, Unc. You're even willing to put up with somebody you might not like, just so your nephew will get his bike motor. What's this? Well, when I put the ad in the paper, anybody could answer it. An organ grinder with a monkey, even. A monkey? Well, guess I'd better go phone my ad to the newspaper. Are you really going to do it, Leroy? I got to, huh? I promised the guy I'd buy his bike motor. And like you, I can't break a promise. For all Uncle knows, I'm phoning the newspaper. Miss Peavy, this is Leroy. Will you do me a favor? Well, Leroy, that all depends. I want you to help me out smart, Unc. I didn't think you needed any help for that, but I'm your man. Hey, Bertie, what time is it? Leroy, it's a long time to dinner, if that's what you mean. No, I'm just expecting a phone call about the room. You mean you actually put that ad in the paper? Well, Aunt thinks I did. He's so afraid I'll rent the room to some character, he may give me the money any minute. I wish that call had come. You mean you got some character in mind? Yeah, Mr. Peavy. Mr. Peavy? He can't move over here. He'd have to bring Miss Peavy in the pad, and I know Miss Gilsey wouldn't stand for that. Well, Mr. Peavy's just going to call Uncle and pretend he wants the room. He can disguise his voice so nobody knows who he is. Oh, oh, I bet that's Mr. Peavy. I'll answer it, Bertie. You go ahead. I don't want no part of it. Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve's residence. Oh, hey there, Leroy. Is that fella Gildersleeve on deck? Uh, Yeah, but who's this? This is an old sea captain looking for a room. Oh. Oh, oh. Just a minute, Captain. Oh, boy. Unc, you want it on the phone? Coming. Who is it, my boy? Somebody who says he's a sea captain. Why would a sea captain be calling me? I haven't the vaguest idea. I'll be seeing you, Aunt. Hello? Hello. Uh, 
Is this Mr. Gildenslob? Oop. <laughs> Not Gildenslob, Gildersleeve. Oh, I beg your pardon, eh? Read in the paper, you have room for that. Who are you? I'm Captain Knut Knutsen. I used to come to town with my parrot. With your parrot? We want a room. Well, Captain, I wonder if you'd mind calling someone else. No, I call you. I'd like to be near the water, so I call the water commissioner. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't rent the room to you and your parrot. Why not? You got something against sea captains? Well, no, no, I didn't mean that. But very frankly, I'm not interested in renting the room. And then where you put the ad in the paper? I didn't put the ad in the paper. My nephew did. And why did he put it in the paper? Well, it's the only way he can buy a bike motor. Why, you don't buy him a bike motor. Now, see here, what business is it of yours? What's a sea captain doing in Summerfield anyway? You don't sound like one to me. And do to me, shiver my timbers. <laughs> I'll bet you're not a sea captain at all. I'll bet you're a phony. Don't you call me a phony, you landlubber. Oh! So you rent me the room or you give the boy the money for his bike motor? If, don't tell me what to do. You're nothing but a nosy old busybody. Well, now I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie, imagine Leroy going to such lengths to pry $20 out of me. Well, if he got Mr. Peavy to call up, I'll bet he didn't even put the ad in the paper. Well, I guess not. Ads cost money. Leroy doesn't put out money. He just takes it in. I'll get it! I'll get it, Bertie. I'm right here. I wonder if that's somebody else calling about the room. Well, I'm loaded this time. Hello. I understand you have a room for rent. Oh? I'm a vacuum cleaner salesman. No, you're not. You're Judge Hooker. I beg your pardon. I'm a vacuum cleaner salesman. You have a vacuum, but it's under your hat, you old goat. Now hang up. <laughs> oh, balderdash. Hey, Leroy, have Judge Hooker call, too? Yeah, this is ridiculous. Uncle Mort, if I were you, I'd put my foot down. I'd forbid him to rent the room. No, Marjorie, anybody could do that. But a smart man would figure out a way to beat Leroy at his own game. Now, how will I do it? With an imagination like his, you have your work cut out for you. Mm -hmm. He's got it working overtime because he knows I don't want anybody in the house. I... Say, why don't I tell him I'm renting the room to somebody he doesn't want? Well, he doesn't care who rents the room just so he gets his $20. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. What if I told him his school teacher wants to rent the room? Miss Pickens? Yeah, the one who's always loading him with homework. Well, that should make him give up the idea. Yeah, that'll fix it. Where is that boy? Well, I have to run home now, Anki. Good luck. See you later, my dear. Leroy! Oh, Leroy! I'm up in the room, Anki! Come down, my boy. Okay! I have news for you, Leroy. Yeah? What's up? You haven't rented the room yet, have you? Oh, not yet, but I will. People will be calling. Well, it won't be necessary to have any more people phone. You won't? No, as a matter of fact... I've taken the liberty of renting the room for you. Oh, boy! You got the money, didn't you? The money? Yeah, 20 bucks in advance. That's just good business. Oh, yes. And you're a good businessman, so I know you got it in advance. Well, naturally. Well, where's the money? <laughs> no, wait a minute, Leroy. Not so fast. You haven't even asked me who's renting the room. You might not want to accept her money when I tell you. Unc, will you just let me see the 20 bucks? Well, let's see if I have it. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Gee, thanks. Leroy, don't grab. Gosh, it's mine. Well, you hold one end of the bill and I'll hold the other. Why, are we going to have a tug of war for it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't think you'll want to take it when you know who's renting the room. Okay. I'm holding one end. Who? Brace yourself now. I'm braced. What would you say if I told you I was renting the room to your teacher, Miss Pickens? Miss Pickens? That's what I said. Now what do you say? Let go of your end. <laughs> Leroy, 
boy, you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. Chances are, if Miss Pickens lived right in this house, she'd want to give you a little private tutoring this summer. I'll take that chance. Give me. Scoop. You took it. My $20. Hey, thanks, Doc. I gotta go get my motor. Yeah, but... Uh... Tell Miss Pickens to move in any time. <laughs> Seemed like such a good plan. <laughs> what happened? What you shaking your head about, Mr. Gill, please? I can't understand it, Bertie. You can't understand what? I can't understand Leroy agreeing to rent the room to Miss Pickens. From what Leroy told me, I can't understand Miss Pickens renting it. Who? She just left on a summer cruise around the world. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. It's only natural that the best salad oil for home use would be Kraft salad oil. After all, Kraft has had more experience making salad dressings than any other company in the world. But why is Kraft salad oil better? Because it's the only oil that's super fine. That means it has lighter body for better blending with other ingredients. Tomorrow... Get the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressings and baking. Get superfined Kraft Oil. That Leroy. Why didn't he tell me Miss Pickens was gallivanting around the world? Well, by George, I'll show that boy he's not so smart. I'll think of some way to take him down the peg. Hello, Gilda. Oh, hello, Judge. Where are you headed in such a hurry? I'm making the rounds, Gilda, reminding everybody that there's a very important election coming up. Be sure you're registered, and then get out and vote. Well, for once, you're right, Judge. By golly, I'm registered. Good for you. On your way downtown, are you? No, I'm looking for Leroy. He's out somewhere testing that motor on his bike. <laughs> he finally swung the deal, did he? Yeah, he thinks he's pretty tricky. Lining you and Peavy up to put one over on me. I'm sorry, old friend, but I couldn't refuse the boy. Well, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve, too. You wait. Yeah. Here's Leroy on his bike. Hi, Al. Come on, Judge. Leroy? I don't like the motor, Unc. Boy, it runs keen. Oh? Pushes the bike right along, does it? Yeah. There's only one thing now I Let know. me take a little spin on it. Yeah, but Unc... Yeah, I'm just going a few miles. I'll be back in a couple of hours. A couple Gildy, where are you going with that bike? I'm going to teach Leroy a lesson. I'll ride it behind the garage and hide it for a while. Yeah, huh? Oh, wait, listen, wait. No, you... I'll see you later, my boy. No, you can't You're out of the way. I'll show you. Whoop. Hey, not so fast. How do I stop this thing? That's what I tried to tell you. Don't break. Don't break. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Now, here's good news for you Gildersleeve fans. Yes, folks, this is Gildersleeve again. This summer, whether you're at the beach, the mountains, or right in your own backyard, you'll be able to hear us every Wednesday night at the usual time. We'll be on the air all summer. Good night, folks. See you next week. Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too. But here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. 
There are two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced. And Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard. Tonight, hear Groucho Marx, You Bet Your Life, on NBC.